Good morning, everyone. I'm so excited to be here with all of you today, and I hope that you will give me some time this morning as we begin our school year. So I want to start with the formalities, because ultimately, the convocation is really the beginning of a new year. And so it is, as the 12th head of school, it is with a renewed sense of purpose and determination that I call the 126th year of Walnut Hill School for the Arts officially open. talk to you first about what a convocation is, because ultimately that's why we're here. And some of you may not know this term, it may be the first time that you're hearing it. The dictionary defines the word convocation as a group of people in a school setting, usually a college, a school, a university, who come together at the beginning of something or as a way of recognizing something. And what I would like to believe is that the simplest way to define a convocation is that it's a welcoming ceremony. It's our first gathering together as a community. So I want to talk about that first. When we come together as Walnut Hill School for the Arts in this space, twice a week, throughout those special periods of the year, I want us to set an intention this year that we will be fully present and that we will recognize how important it is for us as a community to come together. So as part of this welcoming ceremony, I want to set that expectation with all of us. That means that when we're here, we're fully present. And I hope that this morning, I can set the tone for that, for our school and for the year. But ultimately, I would also say that a convocation serves a second purpose. It's a call to action. And usually, the head of school or a college president We'll pick a theme. We'll say, this is what the focus of our year is this year. This is what I want us to think about. In 2019 and 2020, Walnut Hill should be focused on this idea. And so I'm going to do two things today. The first thing I want to do is I want to welcome everyone. I want to welcome all the new students. And I also want to welcome all the new faculty, staff, and administrators who have joined our Walnut Hill community. Can we please give them a warm round of applause? opportunity to welcome our new international students, and I'm looking forward to meeting all our new students. If you're new to Walnut Hill, we welcome you. We welcome you as you are. You are a special member of this community, and we feel privileged to have you here. But I want to spend the bulk of my morning today talking about our call to action. What is the focus and theme of this year? I thought a lot about that over the course of the summer, and I remember that last year, my theme was gratitude, and I looked at moments throughout the year to see if I could find examples of whether or not that message had resonated with our community. And I looked at moments, and I thought about when I heard students or faculty talk about that term, gratitude, and I felt that was a good, that was a good theme last year. So what should we focus on this year? And so, as part of that, I decided that we should focus on this. So... For those of you who don't know, non nobi solum is the motto of Walnut Hill. It is an important phrase. It's an important statement. And in English, it translates to not for ourselves alone. That is our motto. Not for ourselves alone. And when I started thinking about this talk this morning, this convocation, I did what all of you probably would do, which is I thought, I wonder what will happen if I Google, not for yourselves alone. Not for ourselves alone. What happens if I Google it? The first thing that pops up is this. It's really interesting. The highest ranking return on Google is actually the documentary film by Ken Burns on the story of Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Susan B. Anthony and their fight for women's rights. It was really interesting to drill down on that and to think about the fact 
that they decided to call this documentary Not For Ourselves Alone because these two women spent their lives fighting for equal rights for women. And it wasn't until after their death that that vision, that that passion, that that motivation, that determination came to life. So I just want to point out to everybody, for those of you who are returning, it's no coincidence that we're starting our year honoring and celebrating powerful and historic women. I think we should give them a round of applause. alone is part of our story. There was a reason why Miss Conant and Miss Bigelow, the founders of Walnut Hill, decided to choose those words. They didn't just pick them out of a hat. They had a reason. And 126 years ago, they made the decision that that should be the motto of this school. But I want to take you a little further back, because what you may not know is that the origin of the term non nobis solum is actually credited to the Roman philosopher Cicero. And so I want you to take a moment and I want you to look at this because the full line in Latin is non nobis solum nati sumus ortusque nostri partem patria vindicat partem amici. Which means not for ourselves alone are we born. Our country, our friends have a share in us. So when you look at the full quote, it starts to take a much deeper meaning. And so I want you to pause for a moment, because I'm sure some of you are saying right now, Mr. Viva, why is this important? It's the first day of school, and you are asking us to think about some old dead Roman guy. What is that all about? Why is this important? Well, so here's the question I think we should be asking. I think the question we should be asking is, how is this statement, non nobis solum, not for ourselves alone, relevant today? How has it withstood the test of time? In what ways should we be thinking about those words at Walnut Hill? So, I thought about that. I said, what might be the way we want to think about that? Why is it important? And this is what I came up with. It's actually quite simple. The reason why this is important, the reason why this is relevant, it be is because we share one planet. All of us call this planet our home. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter where you grew up. We share one celestial body as our home. That is why that quote should matter. And that's why it's more important now than it probably has ever been. So I want to talk today about that. I want to talk to you today about the fact that if we can agree that we share one planet, if we can agree that this is the one home that no matter where you're from, we all share, we should care about the important issues facing our home. We should pay attention to the issues facing our global home, our planet. So I looked at the United Nations, and this is a quick, fast fact of the important issues that some of the important issues that the United Nations focuses on. So I'm going to ask you to do something this morning. What I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to pick a square, and I want you to read it to yourself. Everyone pick one square. Read it to yourself and think about it. Now I want you to turn to the person next to you, and I want you to share with each other which square you picked. Go ahead, do it right now.
engage in this conversation this morning. I unfortunately don't have enough time to do that today. But did you hear the energy in that room? Did you hear the energy in this room as, we, as you just shared that one thing you picked? And it would be easy for me as head of school to say, the issues on this screen right now, it would be easy for me to say, well, you know what? That lives in the academic program. These are academic issues. This is where that work lives. And it could, and it should. But what I'm more curious about is how are artists dealing with these questions? What are artists doing? And how are artists responding to these issues? And if I had time today, I would share a variety of artists with you, but I have only time to share one. One artist, and it just so happens that this artist is someone that I happen to know personally, who is a close friend of the Walnut Hill community. He is a Chinese artist by the name of Zhu Bing. Zhu has presented his work, yeah, exactly. He's presented his work at the Museum of Modern Art in New York, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the Guggenheim, all over the world. He was as close to us as Mass Mocha. He was at RISD in the spring. And I've had the opportunity to meet Zhu several times. He and I have had meals together. I have had an opportunity to visit his studio and had a chance to really talk to him about what inspires him as an artist. And what you see here is really interesting is that this is a piece from his background story series, okay? So for those of you who may not be familiar, this is what looks like a very traditional Chinese landscape ink drawing, right? So if you've ever been to a museum and looked at their Asian collection, in China, this is a very traditional, long-standing form of art. And when you look at this piece from the front of it, it's absolutely breathtaking, it's huge. And what's interesting about it is, is that he uses non-traditional materials to make this work of art. Because what people don't know is that you're not supposed to experience this art just from the front side. In fact, you're supposed to walk around the back. And when you do, you see that the piece is made up of found materials, garbage, twigs, rocks, all sorts of standard everyday objects. And he uses light and shadow to demonstrate to you that on one side, you're seeing one part of the piece, and on the other side, you're seeing the other. And so what's interesting is that the viewer is surprised that you find this beautiful painting is in fact created by using all these random objects found around in the landscape. And he challenges his audience and says to them, challenge your basic assumptions. Everything is not what it seems. So he's bringing to light something using his art, while at the same time making something beautiful. The piece that speaks to me the most, though, is this piece. And um, it's interesting because uh, I happen to have a deep connection to the mythical creature of the phoenix. All of you know the phoenix, right? Uh, this creature that lives a life, it dies, burns to ashes, and it's reborn and retransformed. And these are two phoenix uh, pieces that Zhu did uh, that really, I think, speak to his desire to not only make something beautiful, but to ask some hard questions about the world. And so when you look at it, this piece comes from his time in China because he was shocked by the primitive working conditions that he saw at the construction sites in the urban metropolitan cities in China. He said that when he went there, it made his skin crawl to see the working conditions of the workers. And he was inspired to create two large sculptures that were made out of the debris and the tools that he savaged on the construction site. Powerful. To me, that is an artist living the words, not Novi soul. So, let me bring this a little closer to home. 
because I think this community also lives this model. And I have examples that I think we should celebrate and that we should share and that we should recognize. Some of them are simple. So many of you may or may not know, but we have a partnership with the Natick Organic Community Farm. Some of the food that you will eat in the dining hall today comes from the Natick Organic Farm. Now, some people would say, that's wonderful, Mr. Viva. That's great that we do that. We support a local organic farm, a local community organization. Look at us. It is good. And you should actually thank the folks at Sodexo for making a commitment to try to make sure that our food comes from responsibly, locally sourced farmers and resources. That's one way we can live non nobi solo. But there are a variety of other ways. In fact, when I look, I realize that there are examples all over the place. Right? In fact, we live the words not for ourselves alone when we leave campus and we perform for the community. When we put art outside so that people who don't have access to the inside of Walnut Hill still get to experience art. We live it when we go to places that have historic significance and try to find new stories that need to be told. We also find it yes. when we make our performances open to the community. When we invite local elementary schools to Walnut Hill to come and see art, some of these children for the very first time, we are living our motto, not for ourselves alone. When our alumni give back, when our alumni use their art and their time and their resources to continue living the motto, not for ourselves alone. I'm proud of those examples. There's one example in particular that I think needs its own time and its own screen because I love, I love this. This was a project that Nikki Conrad did last year with some members of the theater department. And um, what I love about this picture is this little guy right here. Not for ourselves alone, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that little boy, the smile on that little boy's face says everything. It says absolutely everything. I don't think that there is an award or a recognition that can be more powerful to an artist than seeing a smile like that. So I am proud of this community. We do live this model. But I don't think it's enough. I don't think we should be comfortable with what we've done so far. And I want you to probably think for a moment. You're saying, Mr. Viva, where do we begin? You gave us these squares where you asked us to think about these big global issues. How are we supposed to know where we're supposed to begin? Well, let me say something. And let me be provocative this morning. I'm sick and tired of politicians in this country complaining and arguing about important issues and doing nothing about it.
a global movement. It's not an adult. It's a teenager. It's one of you. Calling to action and end to the use of fossil fuels. And you know what they say? This is important because our house is on fire. Have any of you watched the news? Have you seen what the hurricane is doing? Have you noticed that the Amazon is on fire? Am I the only one? Do you know what scientists say? Scientists have said that the portion of the Amazon rainforest that gets lost will be lost forever. Are we comfortable with that, Walnut Hill? No. So, I want to take you back to where I started. I'm going to take you back to where I started because I said to you, not for ourselves alone is as important today as it has ever been. And I want you to think about that this year. I really do. I want you to take the time to think about that term, not for ourselves alone. This year can't just be about ourselves. This year can't just be about me. It needs to be about we. We are Walnut Hill School for the Arts. This is part of our story too. So, as we set out into the year, I want you to think about that. Because this map, this map, each dot on this map represents a student in this room. There are three, there are three, three continents, three continents reflected on this map. The global community is here. The world is gathered here, ladies and gentlemen. So I want you to think, I want to charge us this year to ask how we are going to respond to the most pressing and important issues of our time. How is our work relevant? For the adults in the community, I know I've had conversations with you. We are all fed up with the inaction that we see around us. I am fed up with the inaction I see. The leaders that have been elected in this country have failed us. It doesn't matter whether they're Republicans or Democrats. What are we going to do about it? What position are we going to take? Because here's what I will say to you. We are a global community, and this is our home. So this year, I don't want you to just ask, what does this mean for ourselves? We have to ask the question, what does this mean for our school? What does this mean for our community? And what does this mean for our world? I'm so deeply privileged to be your head of school. And I appreciate your attention this morning. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very much.